Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Patrick coming with another GME video. Going to be talking about the backbone of this MediaWork rise we've seen in GME over the last month or so. So if you're ready to learn about some real in-depth knowledge and see what's really fueling this fire, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get right into it here today. All right, so let's jump into it today. As you guys can see, I'm going to take a little bit different of approach. I'm going to be using the Options Pro software that can be found exclusively with the VectorVest software. If you're interested in utilizing this, especially if you're an options trader, give our support a call or click on the link in the description below to read more about it. So with that, what we see here is the price of GME over the last few days shown on an intraday one minute chart. And then below there is the cumulative implied volatility. Now this is gonna look a little bit different and not necessarily match up to that implied volatility you may see with your broker. That's because the cumulative implied volatility is something unique with the Options Pro software that essentially takes in more data points than what the standard implied volatility does by looking at the entire options chain rather than looking at just one specific option. So when you see that, the numbers may look a little different going forward here today, but don't worry, that's really not gonna mess with what we're talking about and the whole purpose of what we're trying to get across and trying to share with you guys is still gonna be true with this one. So implied volatility and a very simplistic definition is looking at how much a stock's price can move. Essentially, the easiest way to look at it is when the stock moves more, the implied volatility goes up. When you look at that implied volatility number, that typically means that the stock can move more drastically at any given time and have wilder swings. Well, as you guys can see, implied volatility has been relatively flat through this whole run, which is a lot different than anything that we saw the last time around with the GME rise. As of Wednesday this week, we did see that short attack coming in, which is essentially two borrowers or two big players in this trade, passing the trade back and forth, lowering the stock price. Luckily, we've seen this in the past. We saw them try to do the same type of an attack in the last run. We saw it again this week. Luckily for us, anybody, any diamond hands that are watching this know what, ex what to expect and know that this is nothing new and sat through this, held through it, and the stock came right back. I'm not going to get into all the speculation on that, but if you're not familiar with short ladders or short attacks, definitely check them out. I think I may actually do another video coming up very soon on that. So if you guys want to learn more about it, hit that like button, hit that share button, share this with all your friends, share it with all your family. If we get a lot of support on this one, I will make sure that I definitely do a follow up getting into more detail on that short attack. So looking back at this graph, everybody has been you know panicking a little bit that is GME starting to slow down? Is GME starting to roll over? Is this run done? And just because the market has been moving up and GME has been moving sideways the last couple of days. Well, you gotta keep in mind, GME at this point is still up 441% roughly from the lows of that $40 range just a couple of weeks ago. So this is a huge run in a very short period of time. Seeing these slowdowns or these pauses is essential if we want to keep this rally healthy and if we want to keep hitting those new highs going forward. So the reason why I talk about that is because anybody who was trading GME last time throughout that big run up or that sh mini short squeeze essentially knows that these short ladder attacks that swing price drastically skyrocket implied volatility, which you can see here on the graph. As we look, here's that short ladder attack that we talked about, but the run up right before that, you saw implied volatility starting to spike and then that crash coming down, implied volatility continuing to peak. And then finally, once the stock started moving sideways, implied volatility starts settling back down and starts easing a little bit. Now, if you're not familiar with options, the reason why this is so crucial is because this whole run-up has been fueled by a lot of options buyers. More retail investors are learning about them. More retail investors are educating themselves, which is what we like to see here at VectorVest, since that's what we've been about for over 30 years. And that's what we're starting to see now with this volatility, is when volatility skyrockets like that, 
those options become less attractive. Meaning that if the volatility as is, let's say 600%, then that means that stock can move 600% at any given time. Therefore, it would have to have a huge run to make a really high implied volatility options contract become actually worth something. So the big money that we really want to see help continue to push this higher as we chug along when they see volatility spiking like that, they know that. So therefore they're probably going to hold off on buying those options. Well, with GME settling down over the last couple of days, that has done a phenomenal job settling that implied volatility. Yes, it's still high relative to what else is out there, but it is GME, however. So take it with a grain of salt. But getting back into it, when the big money sees that the implied volatility is slowing down, taking a more steady approach, that makes the options chains more attractive, which then gives you more leverage for less money to help buy more stocks, buy more calls, buy more options on GME, which helps rise or make the stock's price rise. This is exactly what you want to see. And even though we've had two flat days so far as of the time of recording this, which, you know, there's still the second half of the day that we can see things change. But at the time of recording, we're still relatively flat, but overall still higher. Right now, GME is up somewhere between 7 and 10% bouncing around those levels. And that is still not a bad day. That's still a green day, and we like to see that. So the whole purpose of today's video is to help ease people's emotions because here at VectorVest, we try to teach the retail investor how to become less emotional in their trading and focus more on a systematic approach. And so today, seeing this and putting it into perspective can hopefully uh, you know, calm those emotions down, help reduce some of that stress that you see when GME isn't going up 40, 50% every single day. So if you've liked today's video, don't forget, share this with all your friends, share this with all your family, share it with all your trading groups. Let's get this going viral. And until the next one, take care, adios, and I'll see you guys on the moon.